My Gavanen folks, today we have the very interesting looking integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 minus x squared times cosine log x over x dx. And this thing does look extremely cool, but how on earth are we to begin a solution development? Well, we could start off by letting log x here equal minus u. That seems to make sense, and this implies that 1 over x dx equals negative du. And of course, this further implies that x equals e to the negative u. So what about the limits of integration? As x approaches 0, we have log x approaching negative infinity, so u approaches infinity. And as x approaches 1, we have u approaching log 1, which is 0. So this implies that i equals the integral from infinity to 0 of log 1 minus e to the negative 2u times cosine negative u, terribly sorry about that, du. And of course we could get rid of the negative sign because of the differential element by switching up the limits of integration. So we now have the integral from 0 to infinity. And of course we do know that cosine is an even function, so cosine negative u equals cosine u. And I really should keep my notifications off. Terribly sorry about that once again. I'll check out the memes you guys send afterwards. So, wait, what on earth are we supposed to do with this thing? Well, we do have the logarithm of 1 minus something. So, we could invoke the series expansion log 1 minus z equal to the sum over k of z to the k over k with a negative sign outside. And this thing is valid as long as the absolute value of z is less than 1, which is, of course, valid for z equal to e to the minus 2u on this interval of integration. So this implies that log 1 minus e to the negative 2u equals negative sum over k e to the negative 2ku over k. And plugging this into our integral gives us i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity cosine u times the sum over k of e to the minus 2ku over k du, and of course a negative sign that I am inevitably going to forget sometime. And because this cosine term is independent of the index variable k, we can take it inside the, the summation operator, that is. And we now have the negative of the integral from 0 to infinity, sum over k from 1 to infinity, e to the minus 2ku times cosine u over k du. We can switch up the order of the integration and summation operators because there are no problems regarding convergence, clearly. So we have negative sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity, e to the minus 2ku times cosine u du, and we can take the 1 over k term outside because it's independent of the variable of integration, which in this case is u. Okay, cool. That was, that was nice so far. But what about the remaining integral? Well, I have an opportunity to either invoke a table of Laplace transforms, which is the more convenient option. But you know me how much I love complex analysis, so why not just invoke complex numbers? Because that may not be the most efficient approach. We could just look up a table, but we're not here for efficiency, we're here just to do cool math. So we have the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus 2ku times e to the negative i times u du, because we know from Euler's formula that the real part, terribly sorry about that, the real part of e to the minus i times u is again cosine of u. So with that said, the remaining integration is quite trivial. This can be evaluated as the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus u could be factored out. So we have 2k plus i du, which sorts out to e to the minus u, 2k plus i, again, terribly sorry about that, terribly sorry about that once more. I wonder how that's going to look in the timestamps. Over 2k plus i, limits are 0 and infinity. Now, the exponential function could be broken down 
into e to the minus 2ku times e to the negative i times u, and u is of course a real variable. So as u approaches infinity, this thing is going to crash down to zero. So we have zero times a complex exponential, which is of course zero. So the first term is eliminated and we're left with minus the limit of this thing as u approaches zero, which is of course one over two k plus i. Okay, cool. And this implies that the target integral i is just the, the two negatives do indeed cancel out. So we have sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k times the real part of 1 over 2k plus i. And I'm getting that something's wrong. I can feel it type meme. Oh, wait. Sorry about that. I forget basic calculus. So there's a negative sign up here. So because of the chain rule for, or well, the reverse chain rule, I guess, for integration or antiderivative purposes, we do have the negative signs canceling out, and this is what we what we have at the end. It's one over two k plus i. So there's still a negative sign outside. Okay, cool. And now we can separate this complex number into real and imaginary parts. So we have the negative of the sum over k of one over k times one over two k plus one, terribly sorry about that, forgot the real part operator. So we have one over two k plus i, that is, times two k minus i over two k minus i, just expanding by the conjugate, negative sum over k of one over k, real part, two k minus i over four k squared minus i squared, which is negative one. So again, the negative signs cancel out. So what we're left with is negative, terribly sorry about that, sum over k, 1 over k times 2k over 4k plus 1, 4k squared plus 1 that is. We have some lovely cancellation and now we are left with the negative of the sum over k of 2 over 4k squared plus 1. And we could just factor out 4 from here so that we have one half squared and that looks quite nice and also it gets rid of the factor of two upstairs so all we need is negative one half sum over k of one over k squared plus one half squared and now to invoke one of my favorite infinite series results and that is the sum over k from one to infinity of one over k squared plus a squared and this thing converges to pi over 2a times hyperbolic cotangent of pi times a minus 1 over 2a squared. So in our case, we just have a equal to 1 half. So this implies that i equals negative 1 half times, well, the negative sign means I can switch up the order of the difference here. So we have 1 over 2 times a quarter minus pi over two times one half, terribly sorry about that, times hyperbolic cotangent of pi over two. So we do have some cancellation here and the multiplicative inverse of one half is supposed to be equal to two. And we have some cancellation here. Oh, so all of this implies that i is simply one minus pi over two times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi over two, which looks dope. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.